Uh, listen, I just wanted to give you a bit of advice on if you're a shortwave listener and uh, how to improve your experience. So I'm an antenna, antenna. My name's Callum, by the way. I'm an antenna manufacturer. This whole channel is about, normally, most of it's about antennas, a bit of a ham radio and advice and that sort of thing. But listening to shortwave can be a bit of a minefield because very often I'm just looking at, you know, I've got the internet here. Very often you've got this little telescopic uh, pole that, that they expect you to listen to shortwave. And sometimes you're going to find that it's uh, not very efficient. So I'm going to give you some ideas if you're prepared to go out into the backyard, into the back garden of what you can do and what difference, substantial difference you can make sometimes. Now, in the main, the height of an antenna dictates how well it's going to transmit and to an exact extent how well it's going to receive. But you're, if you are in a built up area, you'll find that quite often you will hear lots of buzzing and clicks and pops and what we call QRN, man-made interference. Man-made interference, we can not eliminate, but we can reduce the impact of our man-made interference by putting our antenna quite low to the ground. So I'm going to give you three ideas, all right, depending on the um, radio you've got. Now, some radios at the back will just have a maybe a screw terminal or something else, and it might say antenna. And the idea for that is that you can put some sort of long wire out in the, in the garden. Sometimes it's got a, what they call a 3.5 mil jack. And uh, I'm just looking on Amazon here. There's a little 3.5 mil jack with some connectors on the top, which will come in handy in a minute. And other times you might have something called a BNC connector uh, or some sort of different connector. All right, depending on your shortwave radio. Now, if it's a single screw thread and it just says antenna, and these are probably very old radios. Hopefully, I'm looking for two, all right? Because just like any electrical circuit, it's got normal two. Like a battery's got a positive and a negative, hasn't it? Two's going to be better, and I'll show you in a minute. A three and a half mil uh, jack. Again, if we look at the picture here, we've got two. We've got the earth, which is generally the tip, I think. And then, or is it the other way around? But it doesn't matter for our purposes. One is One is... Positive one is negative, if you like. So that's good, that's good. And a BNC connector, and I'll show you what that looks like. It might look something a bit like this. All right, BNC. I don't know other styles, but in the main, you'll be able to work it out from the user guide or whatever else, what other connector you've got. But effectively, what we're after, we're after a positive and a negative, and it doesn't matter which way out it is. So there's a couple of antennas that we can make. The first one, and I'll just draw some sort of random, you know, backyard, okay, is we can get a piece of coaxial cable, coax, C-O-A-X, coax, uh, and we can connect our coax to directly to our little thing. Oh, there's one there as well, look. So what we do is when we strip back the coax, okay, the coax cable will have a center conductor and then it's got this braid on the outside and then a slightly bigger jacket because we've stripped it back and that's a coax. It's like old TV cable, isn't it? All right, it's a coaxial cable. So what we want to do in all these circumstances is connect the tip to one side and the braid to the other side. All right, you can just piggyback some bits of wire onto that and whatever, and you'll find it. Just don't short the two out, all right? They need to be separate. Again, at the other end, we've got our coax to our antenna. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect one to one place and we can connect the braid to the other. And you can like, tape it up and put a bit of Vaseline on it or something to stop the water getting in the coax. That's what we don't want to do. So what antenna ideas can I give to you? I would look at a, if you've got some sort of random back backyard, you can take a piece of wire, any, any wire, any wire, some old ethernet cables, some telephone wire you've got knocking around, any wire, cheap, and you can buy like 330 feet or 100 meters of wire from a local, but very often they call it equipment wire, equipment wire. So what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna take this bit or this bit here, all right? 
the other end of this and we'll just make a little knot just to say it's here and that could be anywhere and we could just run this wire on the ground around the flower beds and the vegetables and whatever else and connect it back up to here so effectively that's become a loop we've connected one side of the loop to here and the other side of the loop to there and you'll find that will be a generally pleasant broad-banded um, antenna that you can listen to quite successfully so your coax comes back to your radio now i could go all advanced on you and you could we could talk about putting chokes on the line and transformers and everything else you don't need to okay you're just fiddling around trying to get that station you know radio albania or whatever it is all right so you've got your loop on the ground you can do the same thing and lift it off the ground okay so we can have it at zero literally on the ground then we can lift it up and you can lift it up as high as you want the higher you lift it up the more interference you might hear from around about plasma tvs and all sorts of stuff hello i'll be with you in a moment so these are not caught i'll make a list here so one loop and then we've got low and high if you like now i've got i've got two of these uh, I've got one very low to the ground, a big one. It's 90 meters, 320, so that's about 300 feet. And that's about one foot, 30 centimeters above the ground. And that was a good, good experiment. And in the main, it works quite well. I've also got another one that's much smaller, very small, only 15 feet square. It's about three or four meters, literally on the ground. That's very successful down at five, six, seven, eight, nine megahertz, by the way, that little one. But they're both both the same. Bit of coax. I mean, I've got little transformers and stuff. But to get going, it's this will work, okay? So there's a pair of loops. And the other one I'd recommend uh, you looking at is just a long dipole, best you can. So everybody's backyard, back garden's gonna be different, all right? But effectively, if you have you split it one side of the coax to there and the other side to there, you could have a dipole, which is the two elements, the one of the positive and the negative, if you like. And to be frank with you, if you're doing shortwave listening, it doesn't matter if that one's a bit shorter and this one's a bit longer, all right? And again, it doesn't matter how high or low it is because for the shortwave bands, under like a quarter of a wavelength, which is an enormous height for, you know, down at, seven, eight, nine, 10 megahertz, it won't matter. It will almost be omnidirectional. And it doesn't matter if you come along and go up there and down by the garden shed, and this one comes along here and goes to a tree, all right? It doesn't matter at all. So a little bit of coax and again, back to your radio. So that's kind of dipole shape, if you like, and that's loop shape. At a push, if you have only got a single terminal, then we can do the same, but don't connect it back to here. So connect your, the center of the coax to here and the center of your coax to one side of this. So we'll, you connect the center of your coax to here and a bit of coax to one side of this, but don't connect it all the way back. You can go around and then stop. All right, so it starts there, goes all the way around, and stop it before it gets to the back. All right, just a nice sort of an open loop. And in fact, depending on how far your little radio was from here, you could probably just take a piece of wire, all right, out the back of your little radio, around the garden, around the fence, and yes, yeah, stop it here somewhere. And you'll find there'll be more signal strength than using one of those little telescopic whips. So that's the two ideas I'd give you, or three ideas actually. We've got the loop, we've got the very small loop, we've got a loop on the ground, loop maybe at fence height or around a couple of trees. Bear in mind when the wind blows, the trees move. <laughs> yeah, why I can snap. Or just this business of uh, taking your coax to some sort of weird shaped dipole. All right. And then you want to do a bit of shortwave listing, maybe around the amateur bands or whatever. I think you'll find this will surprise you. There's a little transformer in here called a loop on a ground transformer, L-O-G. Django's not quite sure what we're doing at the moment. All right, Django, do you want to come and plug the loop on the ground in? 
you could buy one of those and it will um it's got some transformation properties all right something to do with impedance and it'll give you a radio a better match bananas and bananas all right together slightly better match you'll be able to hear better basically i use one of these with the loop on the ground thing on the 40 meter band all the time it's fantastic on 40 meters which is uh, around seven megahertz so if you're between sort of five and ten megahertz a little loop on the ground will work great works great all the way down but on your average radio your little you know grundig or whatever you've got might not quite have the punch the gain we're after for a very small loop you might need a bigger loop for that there we are shortwave listening have a good time that's my ideas and it hopefully won't cost you a penny all right do i have any other videos in stock about shortwave listening no so you're gonna to have to take a random one for here and i've got a playlist down here that amateur radio operators might enjoy uh in the meantime enjoy your radio have good fun thanks for tuning in today and i'll bid you farewell all the best for now Bye bye